Welcome to the channel. Producing content for over half of a decade. Hold on to your butts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Hello everyone, welcome back to Cyberdam Plays Martian Memorandum. Now, uh, <laughs> it's been a little bit. We've uh, just conquered the casino, which was pretty much hell. <laughs> hell in a handbasket. Um, I, I'm curious, did we ever click on this guy? Okay, can't be looked at. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we, um, it was difficult. Oh, wait, what's this? They weren't kidding about the security protecting Dick's safe. I've never seen such an elaborate system. Since I've got a moment, I review several items I've picked up. Lowell Percival's gambling notes, that might be something. But he'll tell uh, something if I give these to him. The March Memorandum reads, Collier Stanton. Uh, the colonists have found an ancient Martian artifact. They call it the Oracle Stone. Evidently, it has almost mystical powers. Almost? It's a find uh, of great scientific importance, and I suggest we try to purchase it from them. If it can't be purchased, perhaps they will allow us to study it. Signed, Thomas Dangerfield, archaeologist. I know Stanton became Marshall Alexander, but I. But who is Thomas Dangerfield? That's a good question. So we're going to have to um, visit Thomas too, I believe. So let's see here. Uh, go down that list. Okay, so, so it mentioned Lowell first, so let's, um, let's go talk to Lowell. Oh, that's right. Lowell Percival is a biz- is Mr. Business- didn't we already look at this? With all the warmth of a tax accountant, dressed in a three-piece suit- okay, well. Yeah, we did read all this last time. Good work, Murphy. Now, what can I do for you? Hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Do we go down the list again? I suppose let's um, let's do that. Oh wait, let me make sure the sounds on for the game audio. Okay, good. Yes. Now that he's dead, I'm going to need to get a control uh, of his empire and add it to my own. Then I'll be the top dog. Top dog. Uh, Terraform. Terraform Corp. Got the early rights uh, to silicon mining and built the utilities and buildings that allow them to control. The majority of commerce on the planet. I hope to someday control all of this myself. So it controls a lot of the commerce on the planet. That sounds like a kind of a centralized system that we don't we don't like. <laughs> Less government. That's that's the way to go. Uh, Rockwell doesn't know. I didn't think he would know about Captain Jack Sparrow. No, he probably wouldn't. A uh, beautiful woman and a talented actress. I use those terms loosely, of course. That's a dick thing to say. Now that she's a free woman, I intend to start seeing her. Wow. Creepo. Okay, we have, uh, we have a cre genuine creep right here. Galactic pictures. No. Oh, transportation. I meant to click this. He's uh, that pinhead plastic surgeon I know from Lions Club. Well, I guess. Yeah, he was kind of a creep too, I think. Uh, Mac? Him? I'm a man who knows uh, how to <laughs> exploit any advantage that might fall to me. You don't say. <laughs> uh, talking about advancing on women that, like, only benefit him. Okay. Chantal? Rick? Rick Logan? Oh, he's shifty eyes here. I believe that's the name of the fellow who contacted me about the Oracle Stone. The magic rock. I know how to create an opportunity, and I don't need magic to help me. Well, you need some uh, magic to, um, you know, develop a better poker face, man. Uh, Alexis. It's too bad that Marshall Alexander's daughter has, oh, that face, has disappeared. I heard she was fast and loose. She probably was found murdered somewhere in an alley. However, that would mean controlling interest in Marshall Alexander's company would go to his wife, Nora. Okay. It wouldn't, uh, won't benefit me if you find Alexis, but it, it deals a, a deal's a deal. 
A fellow named Rocky Bullwinkle at Big Dick's Casino might help you. Rocky Bullwinkle. I am inclined not to believe you. <laughs> Just by the name alone. I mean, Rocky and Bullwinkle. I get it. <laughs> and um, I don't think he's... Well, he's not really being clever. Um, okay. So moving on. Uh, do we click Ferris? No. Okay. I got contacted about... Oh, he's shocked. About a rock with magical power. A stone help that helped Marshall Alexander become the wealthiest man in the universe. What a crock. He got there uh, by being shrewd. That's how I intend to take his place. By being shrewd? Okay. Right. Uh, Thomas. I think you know something about Thomas, but we'll move on. Not Jane. Dick. Dick's got the vice, the vice concession on his this planet pretty well wrapped up. That could change if Terraform decides to put him out of business and keep the franchise to someone else. That, now that you mention it, Alexis used to hang out there. Ask the guard there, Rocky Bullwinkle. It's spelled differently this time. You can't bother him at work, but when he goes from uh, someplace near the casino after, I was pretty, okay. I want to actually read the last of that. I uh, had to go all the way down again. Uh, it was, not, no, no, it was Dick. Um, wait, okay. Um, I was in pretty deep to Castro. I'm out now, thanks to you. Wow. <laughs> I think you have yourself to, to blame for that. But uh, we'll move on. <laughs> um, yeah, let's talk about Rocky Bullwinkle. Again, spelled differently. Rocky's a former prize fighter who's soft in the head. He's the, bou uh, he's the bouncer at Big Dick's Casino. Tried to follow him some, uh, him some time. I know he has connections that might be able to help you. Okay. About Deacon. Deacon Hawk's a beautiful woman who had little, uh, a little too much radiation on the brain. She believes we decorate pl this planet uh, by import importing our earthly ways and exploiting Mars. Wait, okay. Uh, she wants to build a society based on the long-dead Martian customs. But I say if the customs were so hot, why are they dead and we are and we're here? I guess... Uh, I don't know if that's a good question, but... Um, I mean... Are they dead, though? <laughs> uh, I guess you would have to do a lot of research to find out, like... If all of them, uh, like, if they're an extinct species, or if, I don't know, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Nathan. Nothing. Brad. Johnny. Angelo. Tex. You're pretty sharp. You're pretty sharp, Murphy. Anybody who uh, who can get inside Castro safe would have to be. Yeah, it's not like uh, I died several times, times <laughs> trying to do so. So, you know, <sighs> but I'll take the credit where I can get it. Okay, so where do we go next here? We have uh, plenty of new names, I think, right? Um, we have, we just, that was just Lowell, so we have to move on to, you know, it's been a while. How you doing? Oh, can't go there. Oh, can't go there from here. What? Kind of strange. Uh, okay. Let's see. Go down this list. Did we already do? Okay, we did. We did power plant. I know. I remember that. Um, might just have to wing it. But let's see. Yeah, we've done all these. We go back to someone, maybe. Um, gotta be sure. Hmm. Um. Okay. Huh. Yeah, let's go. I guess Bradley. Bradley. Bradley be the next one, I suppose. 
Off a dirty street down a short alley, I find the address for Brad Erickson. I push the buzzer, no answer. I knock on the door for a while, and a light goes on. The door slides open, and a figure stands quietly staring at me. His looks even shock me a bit. Maybe he'd been struck by something thrown from a passing aircraft. Because Brad Erickson appears to be uh, appears in the slide to be six feet of breathing, walking vomit. Oh no, that was Brad. Oh yeah, we did talk to him. Strange. Um, yeah, that's a little weird. Okay, so we have uh, Bloodworth here. Um, yeah, I didn't see that last time. Let me go down the list again. I'm kind of curious. Um, let's see. Maybe we just didn't get the whole list. Um, you know, from that location. Let's talk to Nathan Bloodworth, maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> My mistake. That wasn't a location. That was just talking to him about it. Um, hmm. Jane Mansfield. That was that was the uh, aerobic instructor. That's right. So, let's... Um, hmm. Yeah, I think we just pretty much went to everybody. Maybe not the temple. Might have to go there next. Yeah, let, let's try the temple. Ooh. Like the ancient walled city of Petra, the monument of the temple is carved directly from the towering wall of Martian granite. The six ornate carved pillars stand below the guarding entrance to the holiest place of the ancients. A huge metal gate hinged on to massive courtyard wall that surrounds the temples, protecting it from intruders, blasphemers, and Martian party animals. Ooh, fancy. Okay, are we are we supposed to be here? <laughs> um, maybe not. Um, oh, oh, wait, no. Lowell told us about um, the guy at uh, Big Dick's Casino. That's right. God, am I stupid. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, will they let me back into the casino? Okay. Good. <laughs> Password still works. Who's that? Oh. Okay, so he just went down the alley. That's fine. Uh, go to casino. Let's see. Wait a minute. Did that guy ever pass up before? Because he just went down the alley and I've never seen him before. Didn't see him walk out before at least. Huh. No, he, no, he didn't go anywhere. Maybe I just <laughs> went the wrong way, I guess. Or maybe I just had to reset that. Um, reset that. Let's see. How'd I get back? <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, travel? No? How do you leave? Oh, that's right, you had to. You had to straight up leave the alley that way. Got it. So, let's see if we can um, refresh that. Is he gonna... Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> I opened it twice. That's good. Okay, follow him. There he is. Talk. I need... To... What? Rocky doesn't like being followed. He decides to beat you. Within an inch of your life, unfortunately, he misjudged the distance. Great. So we have a, a little backtrack, a bit of backtracking to do. But we can just rush through it. That's fine. So, uh, load. I keep forgetting that <laughs> this is one of those games that you just have to keep... Uh, what? Oh, that's right. Um, you just have to keep <laughs> saving and saving often. So, it was Lowell. Yeah, luckily we weren't too far back. Just click on everything. Luckily we've read all this. Um, okay. We never have to click TMS, I'm pretty sure, but better safe than sorry. I, you can never be sure about these old DOS games. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, dang, I hate that it does that. <laughs> Has to go back, you know, every time. Dang it. <laughs> Sometimes it just refreshes like that. You know, I don't like it. But uh, just ask about all of them. He doesn't like me. Okay. I think that's all of them. Okay. Then where do we go now? Oh yeah, casino. That's right. Okay, we are going to save here. Save under now. <laughs> all right. Uh, open that stupid door. Okay, so what do we do here? We hide somewhere while he's before he sees us. Okay. Uh huh. What was that about? Oh. Ah. Okay. So what do we do here? Okay, we're just. <laughs> Pretty sure we just follow him in. We just could go to here. Well, no. Open up. Hmm. Let's try that again. I had to be quicker. Okay. Let's try this again. Is he gonna come out? Yeah. Hello, Mr. Uh, whatever the, the hell his name was again. Run! Wait, this time we're just gonna have to click go to right away. Hopefully he doesn't see us on the other side. Okay. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, run. Quick. Go. Ah. Get this thing. <laughs> I dance around. You cautiously, cautiously step through the doorway. Ooh, this is where we, this is where we saw that guy, Captain Jack Sparrow. Yes. Uh, what can I do for you? Whew. That's a little unnerving. Um. Okay, let's go down the list. Marshall, he's a Lord King of Industry on this planet, or was. Yeah. Don't smile. Um, Terraform. They haven't always been fair with the, our people in the past. Your people. And rumors are spreading that the company is in trouble. Okay, Rockwell? Doesn't know. Um, Captain Jack Sparrow. I have to remember <laughs> hitting that button just cancels out. So, nothing. Um, okay, Galactic? Lawrence. I tried to get him to remove his ugly growth from my shoulder, but he declined. Oh, hello, Lawrence. Right. Uh, right. I don't know anything. Lowell? Lowell actually isn't a bad guy. I've worked with him before. He is, he's ambitious, and he would rather would like to run things on this planet. But he's always been fair to me. If you treat him, you treat him right, he'll return the favor. Scratch his back... You'll scratch yours. Got it. Chantal? Hmm. This is definitely the same place we were when we talked to... Uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Right? Um, I've seen the name on television and in the paper. She's the heir to Marshall Alexander. She's been missing for several months. You don't say. I I, I wouldn't, couldn't have guessed that. Um, Ferris. Guy? He should know Guy. I would think. Uh, Oracle? No. I know that guy. He's building some huge nuclear-powered reactor. Oh, that's not good. I did some work for him on a magnetic field generation system. Sounds, um... Sounds like he's on the up and up. Uh, Jane? Daryl would uh, like you to arrange a date for him. So, so are, are you Lawrence and that's Daryl, or is it the other way around? It doesn't help that they don't speak. Dick. Big Dick is a vicious, savage gangster. He's gone crazy with power over at the casino of his. 
he drove all of his competitors back to Earth. Well, I'm sure they thank him for it. This place seems to... This Mars place seems to be a... A dive. Uh, Rocky. Rocky's okay. He's just a little dim-witted because his brains have been pounded into mush. Oh, is that? Okay. He's kept his ears open for the mutants at, at Big Dicks. Okay. <laughs> I, I would wish that they wouldn't bring up brain. A brain. Because if you guys didn't see the earlier episode where I talked to that guy who... Well, he, he, he had a lot on his mind. Um, Watch the old stuff. Rocky. Oh, no, we already did that. And he knows everything that happens on Mars. I really think she can see the future. But she probably wouldn't talk to you. She tries to, she tries to help those who are downtrodden. But give her this amulet. It may loosen her up a bit. Okay. But Nathan? Bloodworth? Nathan Bloodworth, he smuggles in contraband. He's got a wife in town by the name of Michelle. Here's her address. I think... But you know, I am going to look at that again. I think they misspelled address. Uh, what was it again? It was... Who did we click? Was it... No. Thomas? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we already looked at that. Was it Jane? No. Oh, no. Okay, we were well after that. Bloodworth. Oh, here we go. Here's the, yeah, yeah, I, I figured. Here's the address. <laughs> Missing an S there, buddy. It's not a silent letter. Um, okay, so we got Michelle. Michelle keeps good tabs on Nathan. Good to know. Close pair there. Um, Bradley. Bradley's a bit a bitter, despondent young man. He believes he's the son of Marshall Alexander and feels he's been outcast as a unfairly treated. So he's not really his son. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Are they talking because he's, uh, um, he, he was given to that, fa the mutant family, right? And so I don't know if that's a literal thing, like, um, but he, he is his biological son, right? That's a bit weird. Um, I guess it could just be innuendo or I don't know what it would be considered. But, um, uh, but maybe it's not being literal. I don't know. Uh, Johnny Fedora. Nope. Angelo. And me. It's good to see you, Tex. It's been a long time. Yes. It's been a while since you bashed me over the head. In our previous save. <laughs> okay. Huh. So we got that. Um, okay. Very cool. Let's um, get out of here. Yeah, and that's right, we have to walk. <laughs> we have to foot it. You're not in a rush, are you, Tex? Alright, save there. We might as well just keep saving over the same same file. Unless we get into another time segment in which I'll just have to rotate again. Um, okay, so travel. We have that new location that uh, our friend just gave us. Which one was it? Sometimes it, it, they call it different things, so you never know. But it was, it was here. It, here we go. Michelle Bloodworth. Got her address. With a 1S. Uh, the address for Michelle Bloodworth resembled a rusting steel box more than anything else. There's a small porch on it, a lonely wooden rocker, a wrap uh, on the corroded metal door. God, the font. A blowsy woman blowing her nose past it through the window opens the door. Her face is gray and puffy. Her eyes are bloodshot, tired, and suspicious. It's obviously uh, She's obviously... Upset, she opens her mouth and reveals rotting yellow teeth. What can I do for you? She says, "I'm a detective. I'd like to." Okay, that's just us. Um, begins to she begins to sob. I'm so worried about Nathan. I know he's in serious trouble. Whoa. 
What can I do for you? Okay, wait a second. Um, that's a dude. <laughs> like you, you can see the five o'clock shadow on him. But uh, also, those eyes aren't bloodshot, and uh, the face isn't gray. Did they just use the wrong picture? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let me just uh, ask about everything. Everything then, I think. This start, yeah, it started me at the bottom. There we go. Ugh. Okay. Uh, I mean, sorry. Uh, Nathan told me he was going to kill Marshall Alexander because someone had convinced him that Marshall Alexander was Collier Stanton. Wow. Um, and Nathan's father's Nathan's father Robert was the uh, the leader of the colonists were massacred by Stanton. So that could be yeah. And get his hands on the Oracle Stone. Wow. Harsh. <laughs> okay, how about Terraform? That company is founded on the innocent blood of hundreds of men, women, and children. So it's Amazon. Got it. Uh, Rockwell. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow. Doesn't know. Nothing about Nora? Huh. What do you know about, my friend? I wish I were on it right now. I, I could have probably guessed he was going to say that. He, she, whatever. <laughs> Mac. Nope. He's just another greedy businessman. I don't trust him. Nah, I probably wouldn't either. Either. Um, in fact, I don't. <laughs> he was a creepy, creepy man. He, You know, they'll probably never talk about Mac. He is kind of the... <laughs> My unofficial partner, so, you know. Doesn't know anything. Rick. Alexis. Nathan told me that Alexander's daughter was being tricked into stealing the stone from her father. Yeah, I guess we kind of collected that already. Ferris. Nothing. Does anybody want to talk to us about Guy? <laughs> I mean, we tried several times with many different people. Uh, Oracle Stone. The Oracle Stone was discovered by the early colonists. It was in protective mechanism. It was in protective mechanism. Well, okay. That one day popped out of the ground. The stone was said to have magical powers that can make thoughts and dreams come true. Now I believe that the same man who hired Nathan wants him dead because of everything he knows. You should talk to him and convince him that, to turn himself over to the police. He's been working on the, uh, at a remote outpost. Look for him there. Well, that's good to know. Did we actually get the location or did we just look for it elsewhere? Figure it out. I've never heard the name mentioned by Nathan on, a, on occasion, so he has heard. I don't know if he's a man who told him of Alexander or not. Okay. Huh. Uh, Jane. Doesn't know. How about Dick? Castro is... <laughs> That uh, Castro is an evil, uh, is is evil in his own way, as Stanton was in his. Okay. Rocky, nothing. Hmm. I find it suspicious you don't know about Rocky. Apparently, everybody knows about Rocky. Deacon, nope. Nathan is not a uh, not a bloodthirsty killer. He told me that the plan was to trick Alexander to become. To coming to the train yard by telling him he could buy the stone back. Hmm. When Alexander arrived, he realized it was a trap. Oh, what? hold on. Realized it was a trap. Alexander then struggled desperately to get away. Nathan ended up slashing his throat with a broken bottle. Jeez. And Nathan's is part Cherokee. He cut Alexander's ear off as a part of an ancient ritual. Wow. The ritual is to remind Alexander in the next world that he has had no pity and did not listen to the screams of the dying. He wrote a curse on the side of the train and Alexander's blood to condemning him to the next world. Wow, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> Into those bloody rituals. Jeez. Michelle, I'm Nathan's wife. I know that Nathan did uh, to march Alexander was wrong but it should have been done by the authorities years ago. I'm glad Alexander's dead. Whew. Poor Nathan. This, uh, I'm just going to call him a dude because 
not even trying there. Uh, but yeah, poor Nathan. Bradley. Uh, Michelle must have a shining personality. Well, halo up here. Uh, Johnny. Johnny Fedora is one of the Nathan's connections on Earth. He also was involved in the plan. Yeah. About Johnny. <laughs> Angelo? No. And me. That's a first. Doesn't know anything about me. Well, we did just meet, so... To be fair. <laughs> uh, okay. So, what was it? What did we get here? Let's go down that list. Ooh. Okay, okay here we go. What we got? Michelle Bloodworth told me that Nathan has a small mining operation near the Marinera's Valley. I entered the small dome at the uh, bottom of a deep canyon. Something is seriously wrong. Let's quickly save. Uh, we'll call it. Uh, wait, no. Two. Now. I'll just call it two. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Who's this? Uh, the bloody uh, and broken remains of a miner, Nathan Bloodworth, lie crushed on the hard, cold ground. Jeez, I know I said poor Nathan, but damn. Uh, he mouths the words help, help, help over and over, but no sounds come out. His lungs are punctured by his own broken ribs. Oh, God, that that's like one of my worst fears, like just having killed by your own ribs, basically. It's puncturing your own organs. That's pretty much. I'm not going to get graphic. Never mind. Uh, jeez. Okay. Let's see here. Ooh. What's this? You see a military type rebreather. Re Is it rebreather? Rebreather? I don't know. Designed to conserve and recycle oxygen and filter CO2. Can we get it? Oh, no. Take the rebreather. Nice. Um, okay. What else we got here? Tools. You see the standard miner tools. A craft down shovel and pick. Scarred with many years of use. Can we get those two? That'd be nice. Okay, cool. It looked like a little tiny sword and something else next to it. Like it could have been a shield. I don't know. That was kind of funny. Okay. So, let's see, look around some more. No. Wait, what's this? Pipe. A solid steel eye beam has been, have fallen across the body of an old man. We know that old man now. Don't be, don't be rude. Can we get it? Can't take it. All right, continue looking around. Look at the box and realize it is an ancient wood and brass military footlocker. Can we open it? I certainly hope so. It easily opens. That's nice. What's this gold thing? Martian interclock access card. I'm pretty sure we can pick that up. You take the card and all hell breaks loose. Uh oh. It did not kill us? I don't like to save there. Okay. Uh oh. Maybe I saved too soon. <laughs> Back up. I don't know what the hell. What's it, what is this? Um, okay. Can we, uh, walk around him? Can we go in here, please? Can't go there. How about here? Equipment. Open? Uh oh. You die in a fiery explosion. Great. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, it was two. Alright, quick. 
Uh, sorry, Nathan. Uh, your body keeps getting in the way. Open that. Door doesn't open. Okay, get equipment. Hmm. I'm kind of curious here. Um... Oh! You take the jetpack and notice there's no igniter. Well, that's not good. Um, so, I guess we can use the jetpack. I, I'm kind of curious. I, I don't want to explode. But, um, let's go over here. Use a jetpack. I'm pretty sure we have to get the hell out of here. I mean, honestly, <laughs> these time segments kind of mess me up. Uh, jetpack. Use it. The... Not using it. Hmm. We have to point to where we have to go. No? Maybe something here. Oh! You turn on the jet you pack's gas. Put it on uh, put it on and back on, onto the fire. In a whoosh of black smoke, the pack ignites and you rise from the ground. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I'm Dillo Jig. Okay, well. Not gonna let me face the other direction. Uh-oh. Oh. Luckily I picked up that rebreather. I, I can last long for a while. I can last for a while. Uh, the walk back to the base won't be long. It will be long, but not possible. <laughs> it, it will be long. Okay. Okay. Oh, whoa. We just jumped right into the right to the foreground. Okay, that was a glitch. Nice. All right, let's save. Save it under now. It works. Hey, you're back. <laughs> nice to talk. Uh, let me talk to him here. He is the alley. <laughs> okay, sure. So, um, let's see, no. Travel, what else do we have here? We got, uh, can't, can't use the mouse for these. Go down this list here. I don't know what I was thinking. I almost clicked on murder scene. We obviously were there. The other last episode, maybe the one before. Okay. We did the power plant, didn't we? we? Certainly did. Let's go temple. I think we can actually do something here now. Yeah, we did this already. Hey! That gate's open now. That's nice. So just walk on through. I, I am kind of curious what this is. We didn't have a chance to click on it last time. Honeywell Security Control. Okay. Don't really have a uh, key card access or anything, right? So head on in. Oh. That's nice. Okay. I don't like the looks of this person. A heavy set man is prodding the pre uh, the priest and yelling. Tell me where it is or die. The bad guy is armed to the hilt with a very expensive laser weapon. Okay, look, look, look at some of the other stuff here. Highly polished mirror made of Martian crystal. Okay, let's try walking towards them first and see if we can trigger a uh, good old death. Oh, we can't. Oh. Okay, so the beams you can't go in between. That's fine. We're gonna uh, just really, real quickly spark a death scene here. Kinda wonder if, uh, okay. So it doesn't show another graphic. The creep spots you and turns uh, turns and fires his weapon. It burns a hole a buzzard can fly through. All right, we've seen that before. Um, okay. So, load. Okay. Head back to the temple gotta be something we could do to um, maybe distract him with the mirrors I'm glad I don't have to walk all the way over there so um, can we get the mirror 
uh, much too large to carry around. We have done bigger. Maybe move it. Not close enough. That's the hint I needed. Oh, <laughs> you move this pillar, you need something just short of a cruise missile. Thank you. Move this. The mirror quietly slides along. Okay. Huh. Do we, um... Oh. Okay. All right. What is this thing? Is it like an axe? Oh, extinguisher. Large metal pole with cup uh, with cup on the end. Hmm. Used to put out the large torches around the temple. Ooh, can we just put out, out all the all of them to kind of like blind the guy kind of in a way? Can't grab it. Move it. The extinguisher falls, landing with an almost deafening ring. The bad guy turns and fires his laser at the sound. Oh, oh. Victory? I'm uh, a little concerned. Were we supposed to talk to him first? Uh, I'm not going to save just in case. For you. <laughs> Who is this priest? Okay. Okay. Deacon Hawk may. Oh, it's a lady. May have been a high priestess, but she looks more like a goddess. In her late 20s, she's a tall, almost six feet. Her hair is very white and as thick as and as thick as rope. <laughs> it trails down her shoulders and back. Her sensuality is so intense. I can practically feel her heart beating from where I am. Don't get creepy, Tex. She is a clad and shimmering red ceremonial gown. A striking contrast. I can't read right now. Against her unblemished skin, like fine porcelain. Her skin reflects the light, making her almost luminous. Her red lips are very full, and as her blue eyes glisten and through them uh, to her very depths of her, I see a fire smoldering, smoky and hot. The light has re oh. The light has returned. Now I must give the knowledge you seek. Wow! I when I heard when it mentioned that he, as your blue eyes, um. I thought they'd be a little bit more detailed. I, I'm now I have blue eyes, uh, Cyberdan eyes, but um, uh, they don't. They're not like not like a the common blue. Uh, there's like a, a hint of gray in a, in them that like if you, when you look at my eyes, it's like you're looking at Earth. There's a um. There, there's a, a mixed bag there. So we just talk about everything then, huh? Marshall Alexander, or Collier Stanton, was a brilliant scientist. His lust for power of the stone, however, drove him to commit gen Not suicide, but genocide? Oh dear. Absolute power has the, that effect on people. Alexander was highly in, uh, intelligent, was a high in, highly intelligent man who learned to use the stone at an extremely limited level. Even at that level, look at, at all he accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit too much, if you want to ask. Pretty much. Uh, Terraform. That company has done t <laughs> done much to damage this, this world. I thought <laughs> it was, at first uh, glance, too much. And I was like, wait, two is spelled differently. Or, uh, you know, incorrectly. It wouldn't be a first for, the, for this game, but you know what I mean. Rockwell? He won't appreciate that. Um, Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. Won't appreciate that. Nothing? Galactic. No? Lawrence? <laughs> Anybody? Trans Martian Shuttle is the link between Earth and Mars. I thought she was going to get like super philosophical or something. <laughs> Tying to the, the shuttle. Mac. You really don't know anything about Mac. Good man. Lowell? Hmm. 
nobody's gonna know anything about Chantal. That that'll be a running gag. Um, if the game even lasts that long, I don't know. <laughs> I should say it has been a running gag. Whatever, Rick. He attempted to contact me in uh, regards to the stone, but was killed before I can get back to him. Yeah, call waiting can be a bitch. Alexis. Uh, Marshall Alexander's daughter arrived a short time ago. She co contracted several, contacted several people and then disappeared. I believe she is now being held against her will by me. Uh, one person I may, uh, I know may help you locate Alexis. His name is Cooper Bradbury. These names really, I mean, does anybody have a non epic name? Really? I, it's either the first or last name that is pretty amazing. Whatever. <laughs> kind, of, kind of crazy. Oh. Uh, Ferris. There you go. Nobody wants to talk about Guy. The stone is the last remaining gift, in quotations, of a mighty and noble race which was destroyed by an astronomical disaster... That ripped away the Martian atmosphere 80 million years ago. So it's been a while. On the day after their annihilation, the gift, gift, was put in a productive enclosure until it could be awakened by intelligent beings in the future. Something must have gone wrong for a man discovered it. Uh, the Martians were a kind and benevolent race. They would not understand the beast of hatred and destruction in the subconscious of human minds. Man's own intelligence is too underdeveloped or whatever. But if a machine is developed to amplify the brainwave patterns, misspelled to the stone, the beast inside man, man's... Okay, let, let me click on this one more time here. It kind of bugs me when they uh, poorly punctuate and such. Okay. Uh, okay, in the subconscious of human minds, man's own intelligence. Okay. Um, it said the man's subconscious would be released to create destruction on a galactic scale. Needless to say, this wouldn't be a good thing. But you don't know that. Thomas. Dangerfield was part of the Stanton expedition. As an archaeologist, archaeologist he ma uh, made the original discovery around... Colonists at having an artifact great of great value. He advised Collier. I wish they just let you click and to progress text that isn't actually being read, you know, audibly. Okay. I, oh. Um this one you good thing. Oh wait. Okay. Uh, he advised Collier Stanton to try to purchase the stone from them, but they would not sell. When the massacre of the colonists took place, Dangerfield took no part in it. Um, when Dangerfield threatened to inform authorities, he was shot and left for dead. Dangerfield has never given up on his search for the stone and for Collier Stanton. I believe the search has never made him unbalanced, however. Odd thing to say about him. Um, Jane? The aerobic instructor that you probably have never met in your life? Dick. Uh, if he obtains the stone, this world is doomed. I think if anybody at this point obtains the stone, especially me, this planet is not in good shape. Uh, Rocky. Hmm. But he's at Dick's. Uh, Deacon? You have returned the light of my adversary's weapon to save me. And I am in your debt. Big Dick's men were after the stone. It has been foretold that you are the uh, that you are the one to retrieve the stone or die trying. Die die trying sounds more like it. If you recover it, you must be returned to me for safekeeping. You will need something in your quest. Search for the ruins of the colonist camp. Here's the location. Okay. Remember colonist camp. What the remember that part. Uh, okay, moving down. A few more names here. Nathan. Michelle. Bradley. Cooper. Bradbury is the leader of the mutant faction on Mars. 
He is not popular with the authorities. If you find him, he could help you locate Alexis. Okay. Johnny? Angelo? Me! I had a, I have a vision. I've had a vision of you and you... Oh, hold on. Let me try that again. A vision of you and your wonderful abilities. Really? I did think of you to be taller, though. Great. You will need something in your quest. Search the colonist camp. Here's the address. Okay. She gave me the, the address multiple times, but um, that's fine. The... <sighs> Is that was that just a like a um the in, like the insult of uh I guess a while back um I mean you got it in Star Wars talk, talking to Luke by Leia Leia but um I don't know that that's something okay moving on <laughs> if I can collect myself better from this. Okay. So, can we actually travel straight from here? Okay, I have to leave the temple first. Got it. Get the hell out of here. Place is starting to creep me out. Okay, now we can travel, right? Um, uh, what the hell was Deacon Hawk ta talking about? I don't know, she was crazy. What'd she mean by c the coming was foretold? And that business about the light? Uh, only when the light returns will she give me the information. Uh, uh, what kind of light? Uh, one thing's for sure, she knows wh what's going on around here. Okay, so I was... Gosh, something about this text, this uh, font, it really doesn't sit well. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. We have the colonists. Uh, location here. Let's look for that. Here we go. Colonist camp. Okay. The site where the Martian colonists were massacred by the Stanton Expedition is still preserved. Walk slowly by blown out homes, playgrounds as the wind homes and playgrounds as the wind whistles eerily through the twisted wreckage. Wow. This place looks nice, cozy. Let's save there. Okay, look around. Uh, a child's sand pail. Let me just refresh the chat here. Okay, cool. Uh, here, HCl2 acid in a glass tube. It sounds dangerous, let's put it in our pocket. Carefully take the acid, great. <laughs> um okay keep looking sandbox is child sandbox a slide where the 62 children of the martian camp once laughed and played until they obviously blew up right uh dome a martian ge geodesic to uh i think i said that right dome made of uh wound graphite fibers wound graphite fibers the dome has a blast and burn damage from fragmentation bombs and machine gun fire. That, that's not pleasant. Okay, <laughs> let's move around a bit. Can we, uh, let me see if we can grab this thing, the little bucket. Can't take it, how about this thing? All right, maybe we can uh, move the screen a bit. Yes, we can. That's nice. All right. Let's look at the graveyard over here, <laughs> or um, <laughs> hints of a graveyard. The eerie but peaceful resting place for all 228 Martian settlers. <laughs> what a bummer. Okay. Oh, tuning fork. An electrosonic fusion powered tuning fork designed to fracture bulletproof glass. Can we grab it? Can't take that. Oh, that was scrap metal. Where's the tuning fork? Did we click that? Oh, okay. Did we take it? I certainly hope so. Tuning fork. Good. <laughs> I accidentally clicked away too too soon. Okay. What's what's this? Can't look at it apparently. 
Um, okay, tail fin, piece of missile. Sorry, my head was elsewhere there. All the remains of a heat-seeking missile which fell short of its target. Well, let's not stick around here too much. Um, okay, is, is there anywhere else we can go over here? No? Okay, let's look at the slide over here, maybe. Oh, no, we did already. <laughs> Brain dead Dan today. <laughs> Nothing really much else we could do here. Okay, so that was the colonist camp. Uh, where else can we go? We got a couple new names, right? Let's see. Yes. Okay, so we talked to Bradley here, right? What can I do for you? Okay, well, Bradley, we need to talk about some uh, some holes in your logic here pop just before they died my foster parents told me oh okay we did all these already then well let's just to be sure corporation should be shared with me yeah i know i know bradley rockwell captain jack sparrow i'm never gonna get old no i would never get over that Still, kind of confusing that he doesn't know anything about Nora, but he does about Marshall, obviously. Okay. Yeah, I think he's just going to give us all the same answers. But we do have a couple new names. Let's see. Uh, I'm not going to talk to him about himself again. Who else did we have here? Dick? Castro's a heartless SOB. Oh, wait. Yeah, we already talked about that. Uh, Cooper. Cooper is a militant freak who thinks freaks are the, uh, the rightful heirs to Mars. He been he been a friend of mine since I was a kid. If you want to talk to him, try this address at the mutant side. Wait, one more time, mutant side of Marinara's Marinari's city. Has it been Marinari the whole time? And I just misread it. I guess. <laughs> But I think that's what we needed, though. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay, what, what would it be called? Would it just be Cooper? Let's find out. Okay. Here we go. Cooper. What's what's going to say? They need a little bit more back. More, they need more backgrounds, I should say. Bradley Erickson had given me a hot tip on where, the whereabouts of Cooper Bradbury. Uh, Brad had told me about the alley of Free, in Freetown near the radioactive slag heap. Let's not go there. Uh, stepping behind a street lamp, Bradbury is the king of freaks. Radiation had done its job on this guy. His huge concave forehead is covered with green fungus that grows from the thousands of tiny holes that were left in his head after his hair dropped out. His nose is like a souse. You can stare straight into his head through it. Jeez. His eyes are wide, wide set and mong mongoloid in appearance. His teeth would be, would look great on a 12 year old horse. Jeez, this guy's messed up. If he hadn't been missing the front too. I don't want to look at this guy. Oh, oh no. What can I do for you? This is polite. I like it when characters can be that way. <laughs> Seem like the more more disturbing looking the character, the nicer they are to me. <laughs> At least in this game. Uh, okay, let's ask about stuff, huh? Uh, word has spread fast on Alexander. We have found out he obtained the stone. He is oppressed for us for years, making us servants and breaking promises. He was able to know, to thwart our plans, and now we know why. Through the Oracle Stone, he could anticipate our movements and read our thoughts. Well, that's never good. Um, telepathy is a... Well, would that be telepathy or just sight? Um, reading the mind. Whatever. <laughs> Terraform. Terraform will soon be ours. <laughs> 
we will use the, its resources to make the Mars a cleaner, better world than your Earth. Well, the second part of that was actually pretty nice. Rockwell. Uh, don't know anything about Captain Jack Sparrow. Nora. Hmm. As far as I'm concerned, Lawrence uh, sold out to people like you. People like me. That's like non mutants, you mean? Racist. Uh, TMS. Trans Martian Shuttle is, is another Earth owned business. We intend to nationalize. Okay, we have a nationalist here. That's great. Let's not talk to him for very, for very long. Mac? Lowell. Another Outlander. We'll get rid of him <laughs> and other Earth slime when the time comes. This guy's a straight up dictating, like, <laughs> warmongering evil thing. Uh, I, I, was, I was nice to him at first. <laughs> Chantal, obviously not. Nobody wants to talk about her. Uh, Rick, what, wait, what? Okay. Alexis, Marshall Alexander's daughter? I don't have any idea where she is, and we have sources everywhere. Everywhere. Maybe she isn't on Mars anymore. Perhaps she got back to Earth. Maybe. I, just, I still don't trust this guy. Ferris? Ferris is head of the terraform plant for now. Uh, I made this sound a little bit more, nef more nefarious than it actually was. Guy, Oracle Stone. The Martian Stone should be ours, Murphy, and the and I'm prepared to pay handsomely for it. The first settlers on this planet were outcasts, and Alexander killed people, uh, he killed people uh, like us for it. Okay, Mars is our home. To us, Earth is just a nice place to visit. People like you and others should go back to Earth. Uh, we're prepared to push all the norms off our world. Wow, this is harsh. The stone will help us do that. If you get the stone, you'd be, be you'd better make sure it comes to us, or you won't get off Mars alive. Okay, now he's being a little bit too threatening. <laughs> Again, I was nice to you, man. Uh, Thomas, I've got an idea where you'll find Thomas Dangerfield. It's rumored he's he's his he is building some machine in the caverns uh, near the terraform power plant, but knowing where he uh, he might be, it's not enough. It seems he's figured out the ancient Martian interlocking mechanism. They won't get into the cavern without a device for the mechanism. But here's the location. Thank you. I always like locations. Oh, oops. Um, okay, that was Thomas. Jane? No. Castro is a cruel, vicious snake. Kinda. He runs the golden bucket and bled the people dry, as well as force competition out. He's a freak, but his mannerisms make him more like your people. Okay. We, uh, he's looking for the stone as well, and will kill anyone who stands in his way. Like me. Last episode when I died many a times to him. Uh, Rocky? Rocky's just a big stupid fool. Like Mia, apparently. Uh, okay, Deacon. She may be the uh, only true, de truly decent person on this planet. Deacon Hawk had a, uh, heads a cult to worship that worships the peaceful ways of that uh, long, deadly, ancient Martian culture. Let me try that one more time. Um, that may have been the way of the of the future, but first there must, or yeah, there must be a violent revolution. Let's not do a revolution at all. That would be that would be great. Nathan, Nathan is the son of Robert Bloodworth, the leader of the early colonists on Mars. Uh, that were <laughs> slaughtered by the Stanton expedition. We've been hearing a lot about the Stanton expedition, but. Really, just words so far. Um, okay. Michelle is the wife of Nathan. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Sometimes it just goes a little bit... Um, it needs to revert back to where we were, you know? Uh, okay. Bradley? Brad's a mutant son of Marshall Alexander who was given away because of his deformities. 
When we take over Terraform on Mars, he will take his rightful place at the head of the company on this planet. Hmm. I guess. He fits in well, I suppose. Cooper. I lead the rightful heirs to this planet. Mutants were the first settlers on this world. Now we intend to take the planet back from the Outlanders. Uh, you have no right to be here. <laughs> well, I'm here. Deal with it. Uh, Johnny. Okay, Angelo. Uh, me? I don't know, normally help out uh, Outland scum, but I've t been told you're resourceful. Remember my warnings, Murphy. I expect you to sell, uh, sell us this stone if you find it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Okay. Robert Bloodworth led an early mutant colony that discovered the Oracle Stone. Nice. Okay. There you go. So there was a... He talked about a cavern cave, I believe it was. Ah. Okay. Cave. Moving on. Ooh, this place doesn't look nice. The coordinates for Thomas's, Thomas Dangerfield are near the mouth of the large cavern. It was a cavern. Uh, about two kilometers from the power plant... I enter the opening and find a set of stairs. God, that font. Winding down <laughs> inside the mountain. Uh, the stairs seem endl endless, but eventually I find myself in a narrow corridor. Ooh. Okay, doesn't look as bad as like that <laughs> asphalt like valley that we just saw. Okay. All right, so let's move around. I, this kind of reminds me of the jungle, so we're going to probably hit some death traps. The way it's laid out, it just it screams death. Uh, I, maybe I'm being a little bit too cautious. Right, let's just keep walking. Uh, I'm going to save over two. <laughs> Can't be too sure. I don't want to retrace steps like too much. Hey. Okay. Um. Open. Doesn't open. Huh. Do we have anything here? Can we just go down the list? Doesn't work, huh? Is there like a keypad or something? Alloy door. I don't see any keypads. Hmm. Wait, hold on. Maybe I'm missing something here. Is this like a peephole? Oh, small hole in the door made uh, to accept an interlock. Great. So just be a little bit more specific, you know? You insert the card into the slot. Ooh. Uh-oh. Well, okay, it just opened. I was like, okay, we're going to get into another uh, death situation. I don't know. <laughs> Goofy stuff, you know? Not a good move. The door slams shut behind me. Uh-oh. Death? Hey, what? Hi. Uh, in a shaky voice, she responds. Daughter. My daughter? <laughs> Alexis Alexander stands there nervously staring at me with huge fawn-like eyes. Her hair is out of... Uh, her hair is the gold of old paintings and is tussled enough, but not too much. Her face is strong, but beautiful. She has a full set of curves, which nobody had been able to improve on. Um, she is frightened... But it looks like if you could smile easily, her eyes are crystal blue and clear. I'm, I'm mis misreading this, but uh, her mouth is large and sensual. Sounds like a nice looking lady. That she looks pretty good. Uh, what do you want? I want stuff. Um, okay. <laughs> Once again, from the top. Marshall, your pop. Uh, they tell me he's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I feel badly because um, he was my father. Yeah, I would do it. 
but he wa wasn't a good man. I never knew about my father's past. He was cruel uh, to those around Hmm. <laughs> He was cruel to those around him, but he always was a good was always good to me. Then I found out he his real name was Collier Stanton, so it was okay. The man who massacred that colony. I wanted to hurt him. I knew stealing the stone would get it back at him, so you didn't steal it, thief. Terraform. My father's corporation is nothing more than a bloody sham. It was built on the blood of those my father murdered. Hmm. That's my face, too. Hmm. Rockwell. Rockwell's a good friend. I could always talk to him when I needed someone. Hmm. <laughs> She's not making the same face anymore, but, um, okay. All right. Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Jock's okay. Uh, he can be a sleazeball, but he's good to me. I don't know. Seems like a, quite a pirate. Nora. Oop. Oops. The woman is a witch. She wa uh, wants my father's estate. She only married him because of the, of the money. Uh, she drinks herself into a coma practically every day. What a lush. Wow. I haven't heard that term used in a long time. Galactic. They're not exactly MGM, are they? A low blow to Galactic, but MGM is pretty great. Lawrence. Nothing. That's the first person she has nothing to say about. That's crazy. Um, this has all been the kind of this entire game has been surrounding her or her story like the whole way through, and she has nothing to say about Lawrence. It's a shame. TMS. I took the shuttle several weeks ago. Nice. Nothing about Mac Lowell. Hmm. I would. Oh, gee, finally. I was her roommate for a while, but she got so strung out on drugs, strung out on drugs, I had to leave. Finally, just, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> it all comes to a head. We finally found somebody to talk about Chantal. Rick, he's a dirty louse. Uh, Thomas Dangerfield told me how he used, used Rick to, to seduce me and trick me into stealing the Oracle Stone from my father. How could I have been so stupid to fall for such a creep like that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you. I had no, uh, no idea stealing the stone from my father would cause, cause such a mess. You didn't really? I don't know. It seems like everything has been kind of centered around that stone. <laughs> At least your father's uh, interest. I don't know. <laughs> How about Ferris? Aw. Guy? I worked for a guy occasionally. It helped pay for the rent. So which movie were you a part of then? <laughs> he had a wide variety of different style movies. Sarcasm. Uh, Oracle Stone. Rick told me about... The Wait. I accidentally clicked away. Rick told me about the Oracle Stone my father uh, murdered for. He said it was a rare artifact that must be returned to the families of those who found it. The night I disappeared, the f um, I found the combination to the safe and stole the, stole the stone. I arranged to meet Rick. He sent me to Mars <laughs> with it and said I would uh, he would never meet up with that he would meet up with with me later. Uh, I've been going for a little bit here. <laughs> um, okay, Thomas. He's out of his mind. Is he? Wait, no. He's not the brain guy. Uh, he says the Oracle Stone will allow him to do... Oh, let me try this <laughs> without interruption. Um, allow it, Oracle Stone will allow him to do and get whatever he wants. He's built some machine and says it will magnify the power of the stone to an incredible level. Wow. That's not good. We have a, a machine. Oh, yeah. That's my face, too. It's funny because you can see her pupils going to the, well, to her right, which would be our left. But if you look at it a little bit differently, like from a distance, at least, it looks like she's a demon. <laughs> How about Jane? Oh. Jane's a good friend. She let me stay at her place for a while. Yeah, she did. 
Uh, Dick, I hung out at this place for a while. Yep. R Rocky, nothing. We have ways to go here. Deacon, nothing really about Deacon. She seems kind of important. Uh, Nathan, I overheard Dangerfield making plans to get rid of him. Pretty big accusation. Uh, Michelle? You know about Nathan, but not Michelle. That's curious. Bradley. My stepbrother Bradley has been horribly disfigured through exposure to genetically mutated material. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we talked. Cooper. Nothing. Johnny. Fedora found out that my father's real name was Stanton. When Fedora tried to blackmail him, my father had killed him. Had him killed. Got the words backwards. <laughs> uh, Angelo. Me. Have you got a plan to get us out? <laughs> or do you just stumble in? A little bit of both. Robert. I don't know anything about that. Okay. There you go. So. What? Okay. <laughs> I thought I just immediately found a way out. So, um. Oh, how about this? Get out. Oh. Get out. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, take a look around the room real quick. The screen covers the duct. Wow. Oh, not much to look at. Interesting. Here? Oh, wait. Try it again. Several form fitting mini skirts, some, uh, work out some workout clothes, and a few casual outfits hang by a chromium rod. Can we grab those? Can't take it. Oh, here. King size bed with luxurious comforter. Miss Alexander has been staying in style. Maybe. Let's move it. No? Can't move the mattress? Move the clothes. You drop the clothes to the floor. Hmm. Still can't take it. Look at it again. Several form. Okay. Well, they don't hang from it anymore. But okay. Um, really, there's nothing else we could do here. She responds. Okay. What do you want? Okay. Um, nothing. I thought she might have had something else to say. Um, okay. Oh, wait a minute. We did knock those clothes down. Can we grab the rod? Uh, you yank the rod from its setting. Yay! this? Is this a light bulb for the... Looks like it's for the closet here. Look. No. Okay. Scout out our, scout out the room here. Um, okay. Look at the door. Might be the only way out. A rather formidable looking metal sh alloy, alloy door. Right in the center there. No. Well, here. Here we go. Above the metal alloy door is a safety warning light signaling where the heavy door is opening or closing. Okay, so I guess I can't uh, grab that, can I? No. Obviously, I guess that was stupid. Not tall enough. Um, so, if history dictates anything, that uh, you find something, you use it almost immediately. So, let's see. I can use it there. Oh, hey. Okay, I, I thought that was just a texture. I, I didn't realize it was clickable. That it, for once, it didn't stand out. You pound on the concrete until you, it's cleared away. Uh, chiseling away here. Nice. Can we push whatever the hell this is? Metal plates. Can't do that. Can I grab it? Can't take it either. Okay. Interesting. Um, any more items here? Hmm. I have food and water. We'll, we'll be safe for a while. What is this again? A safe card has been used. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. 
Ooh, you pour the acid and watch it eats the hole through. Yeah, I did have the acid. That's right. <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, HCl2. It sounds familiar. Well, it was because this is the episode we talked about it. Or we picked it up at least. Okay, you move the button just as your as the sweet smell of gas enters your nose. Uh oh, the light begins to darken, darken, darken. Uh oh, shit. We're dead. When Alexis and I come to, we find ourselves in a small chamber surrounded by a mesh force field. I can stick my finger through the mesh, but that's about it. A deranged old man come, uh, comes out of the booth. Um, he walks up to us. Looking like a cat who swallowed the canary. Oh dear. Oh, our evil mad scientist man. Hello, Mr. Murphy. I'm Dr. Thomas Dangerfield. Allow me to fill in uh, on the details of this my great conspiracy. And uh, let, let me don't let me read this again. Ah, oh, shoot. For that, I was beaten, tortured, and left for dead. But uh, being a superior intellect, I willed myself to survive. I spent the next 20 years searching for Collier Stanton. Eight years ago, I saw a photo of Marshall. Uh, the eyes uh, were what I recognized. Um, I realized that Stanton had not died in the D-Day attack and had transformed himself into Marshall Alexander. Oh, those teeth. Uh, many times in, and in many ways, I tried to get my uh, get at my that friend, uh, but his security was too tight, too good. But at long last, I devised a plan of, of genius worthy of my revenge. I hired Rick Logan to seduce Alexander's daughter, Alexis, and convince her to steal the Oracle Stone. Using Johnny Fedora and Nathan Bloodworth, I lured Alexander out of his productive web, protective web by offering that pathetic fool the hope of getting back to, to the stone. Getting back to stone. You see? Okay. Bloodworth executed Stanton. And with his debt finally being uh, finally paid, I went for the stone. The fool, the fool. Rick Logan tried to double cross me, and the market st uh, stone and the stone himself. Um, I left him. That's weird. Alexis Stone Mars, and he brought them to me. Okay, so he brought them the stone. Uh, having studied ancient Martian cultures for years, I was prepared to interpret the stone. I did so completely. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Gave me a lot of time for that one. The stone had been developed by an ancient and highly sophisticated civilization. The stone acts as a conductor between solid matter and the electromagnetic impulses of the brain. Truly, a stone to make dreams come true. It provided that substance or matter of or matter for the uh, impulses provided by the by the brain. Marsh has cre created the stone to freely to free themselves. Okay, unhappily, humans uh, have only been able to create generate enough cerebral energy to make the stone operate on uh, only ne negligible or dangerous levels. Sometimes, okay, jeez. Uh, preparing myself for the eventual possession of the stone, I constructed myself a machine to magnify the impulse impulses of my already advanced brain. Imagine the changes that would uh, be wrought from the stone by my machine. Think bi uh, big, think big, Mr. Murphy. Do not uh, be constrained by the practical, and the practical is um, the refuge of the mediocre. I really don't like these timed uh, talking, whatever. Uh, Mr. Murphy, have you ever desired to be a god, to create worlds, to experience utter do dominion? Wouldn't you like to be uh, able to control... Uh, destinies of peoples, planets, or even universes? Mr. Murphy, jeez, are you, you are about to witness supreme, omnipotent, absolute power. Okay. Can I? Okay. Uh, let's, we gotta save real quick, so, um, Thomas. Okay. So, now that I have a moment to get my thoughts together, the, the text that goes away, like, just timed, which it doesn't actually give you a lot of time, that has been really messing me up in this game. That's, like, one of the biggest flaws. Um, especially since I've been reading it out loud for you guys. Um, 
that's something they could have just left out completely. Just make it, it's a point and click adventure. Just click to move the t um, to the next text frame. That's been really messing up my reading. Uh, okay, save. So let's look around. Okay, pad. The pad where the warped delusion of Thomas Dangerfield are created through the power of the Oracle Stone. So this must be the stone. Uh, chamber. The Oracle Stone sits suspended in a magnetic field surrounded by a thick glass casing. Okay. Huh. Let's see. Talk. Do something, Kex! I'm glad that I finally saw her talk. That's great. Okay, I'm thinking. I'm out of ideas. Can you think of it of something? Um, let's go with the first response. Well, think faster. Don't push me. <laughs> Try distracting him. I'm afraid we're doomed. Well, I'm not the ultimate pessimist, so let's go with one. I'll try. Yeah. Or we can die. That's your choice. Um, okay, so wait, hold on. God, think this, <laughs> think this through. Um, okay. Got the door there that he went through. Looks like a sh the shuttle is over here. Is that the shuttle we've been talking about this whole time? The TMS one? Well, okay, so let's hear what she, see what she does first. Is she actually distracting him? Is anything happening here? What's this? Control box from the mesh uh, force field surrounding your cage. We need something we can use here, right? Okay, he's charging his X Buster, so we let's think this through. Um, we're gonna die, right? Oh, what's this? A bolt passes through the top of the chamber. Can we get it? Suddenly, that's not good. You try to extract the bolt with your fingers, but are unable to. You clamp onto the bolt with your teeth and slowly turn it free. What a man. That's crazy. Uh, use? You want to use the bolt, I suppose? <laughs> that's not good. Um, hold on. Talk. Do something, Kex? Yeah, we, we, we've been through this. Well, think faster. Uh, okay, we're doomed? Well, some hero you are. Really? Wait a second, have you got anything with elastic in it? Hey, that might be good. Why don't you pretend you're sick? When he comes over here to check, I'll overpower him. I don't think that's going to work, Tex. <laughs> Let's go with the, um, elastic. Yes, I do. <gasps> Excellent! The bra. So, um, can we use, um, okay, we got the, uh, we can't use items with other items that we have. Um, what can we use it on? We have the, so we have the thing, the, um, which was in better order here. Okay. Like. They could have put it in order of like when you pick them up, but whatever. That that's nitpicky. Let's do do the bolt or mm. okay. Did she give us something on her bra? I mean. Um, so maybe the bolt? The panel's too far away from you uh, to hit by throwing the bolt. Okay. Uh, use. Okay, let's see. She gave us something on her clothes. What am I missing? It wouldn't be the boots. Huh. Or would it? Doesn't do any good. Wait a minute. Did we actually take it from her? Oh! Oh. 
I thought she just straight up handed it to us, but okay. Fair enough. She held out her arm while we uh, thought. Okay. Maybe we can do that now. You place the bolt in the bra. Oh, we're slingshotting this. Uh, pull it back, take aim, and let it fly. The bolt strikes the lever, controlling the cage, and shuts it off. Hell yeah. Actually, we're going to save. <laughs> Let's save it as now again. Gotta be sure. All right, we're, we're out. Yes. Okay. Let's beat him senseless, I think. Huh? Whoa. Um, <laughs> open? Doesn't open, okay. Um, get. Ha. Huh. Hmm. Can we just straight up get the, can't get the chamber. I thought we'd just straight up take the stone, but let's see. We use something we have on it. We still have the, um, we just used the bolt. I don't know if it's, it's still let us keep it. No. What haven't we used? We gave the film. Okay, amulets. Um, did we ever use the fork? I don't think so. Um, you strike the tuning fork and touch the chamber glass. The glass shatters. Okay. I thought we would need like a bat or something. Uh oh. Get that, maybe? Carefully pick up the stone. Okay, now. Uh, he's coming towards us, so. Um, uh, do we throw it at him? <laughs> I don't think that'll work, but. It's worth a shot. Um, stone. Doesn't work. Okay. Uh, talk to Alexis. Do something, Kex? Y yeah, um, okay. Oh! Oh, we just get out of here. I, I, I hope. Uh, so we go to? Uh oh. Does he have a gun? Oh, you grab Alexis and get into the waiting speeder. Yes! And he also went back into the room. <laughs> Whoa! Thomas Dangerfield's mad, exper uh, mad experiment of attempting to harness the stone's power ended his life. Well, and us. Dangerfield was a decent human being once, but was driven insane by his quest for the ultimate power. Alexis and I decided that Deacon Hawk is the only logical choice for the stone. We arrive at the temple where she is waiting for us. She turns and whispers, you have returned the stone to the mistress of, of the light. You have surely saved the world from annihilation, but you uh, must continue to be, be diligent. Mankind might, may yet to prove the author, be the author of his own demise. Uh, reverence life, uh, reverence life. Protect the living things and recycle. Uh, right. Uh, and now for the safety of mankind, I must take the stone. Perhaps someday, when the human race is ready, it will be returned. Until then, farewell. Hey, we got a little cutscene here. Nice. What you gonna do? The stone consumed her. What was that about? I don't know. I, I think know, she's dead. How about a hot dog and a beer from Weenie World? Ooh, sounds good to me. A hot, a hot dog and a beer from Weenie World. That is how we end the game. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> well, that's, that's something. Okay, so maybe there are no credits. I don't know. I'm, I can't imagine there would be many, but um, anyway, I'll just close it off there. Martian Memorandum. Now, it's a, it was a fascinating game. A lot of... Uh, a lot of edges they could have cut, uh, shaved off. Um, some of the movement was clunky, and I didn't like that you could. Um, you didn't like I said before. I didn't like that the text screens just moved a little bit too fast. Yeah, yeah and I, like I said, obviously clicking on it to 
progress the text. Wouldn't have been that hard to program, really. Um, at least not in my, my opinion. But, uh, yeah. As far as the positives go, the story was excellent. The characters were very, like, different from one another, and they were well fleshed out. Um, I love Tex. Alexis, even though we only met her at the end, she was a pretty neat character. Um, I think we just, we kept her bra, too, which... I don't know if I'll ever give it back to her. But anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was just a great story. And you know, th that's something that uh, most games need more than anything else. Graphics can be like interchangeable between games. You don't need great graphics to have a great title. Um, but the story does, I think it's the, one of the more important of features or uh, important aspects of creating a game. Uh, and when it comes to adventure games, story is the, probably the main focus, or should be at least. Uh, but I'm going to stop my rambling there. Um, you've been watching Cyberdam Plays, Martian Memorandum, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great night, everyone.